Hello everyone, I'm meteorologist Hutch Johnson. In this update, we're going to talk about increasing snow chances. It's looking like a certainty that portions of the Pacific Northwest will have significant snowfall as we head through the weekend ahead. And in the next week, one of those systems could mean big snow for the Great Lakes possibly the Northern Plains. We're going to review and compare a few different models, and I will talk to you about some of the tips as a meteorologist of nearly 30 years that you can use to decipher which model might be onto something and which model might be out to lunch. Let's get started, but first let's take a look at what we have going on with regards to the American forecast model. So we'll start with that model as we uh, take a quick look at the browser over here. Now what I'm looking at is one modeled source here. And again, models are computer generated simulations of the atmosphere. That's it, they're not a forecast. They just give meteorologists and you and I some guidance on how things may change. As a general rule, the farther out in time we go, the lower confidence that we can have, as I mentioned. Now, take a look at this. American Model says that as we go through this time frame now, this midweek day on Wednesday, all the way into the weekend ahead, Saturday and Sunday, big time snow, and in fact, a couple of rounds of snow in the Cascades, the Rockies of Northern Idaho and Western Montana, as well as uh, the Pacific Northwest and even the mountains in Northern California, not too far from Eureka and uh, Redding, as we take a look, that system continues. Now, it's next week where models have been wavering back and forth on what happens from a low pressure system that develops in the Southern Rockies and moves northward. It's been all over the place over the last few days. Here's what the American model says. As we head into Tuesday night, look at what goes on in Minnesota and the Great Lakes region. A storm system moving out of the Rockies will blossom, intensify, and bring deliverable snow, and a lot of it potentially with significant wind as well, here in parts of Minnesota, Wisconsin, and the western reaches of the Great Lakes. This time frame, if you look here, is Tuesday through Thursday. When they last that long, the potential for snowfall really does increase. This storm system continues as we go into the latter part of the week. Now, this is one tip. This American model shows that system moving into the Great Lakes. Let's take a look at what the European model says. Now, as a rule, I tend to prefer using the European model versus the American model for days farther out in the future. But this model too, over the last few days, has shown changing of minds, wavering like a waffle or a pancake. Now, this model, likewise, showing the mountains of western Montana, northern Idaho, and the Pacific Northwest getting whacked with significant snow as we go from Wednesday through Friday and even into the weekend, another round in the same locations brings snow. We could see some high plains snow in eastern Montana and northwest parts of North Dakota. Take a look at this as we go through time. That tends to launch or land as we go through the um, Sunday morning time frame, Saturday night, Sunday morning. That's not the main event. Here comes the main event on the European model. Now, the European model shows that the storm system moving and exiting out of New Mexico here slides up into the Northern Plains and explodes, bringing the potential for significant wind and snow to the Eastern Dakotas, Northern Nebraska, and then it spreads off to the East as we go into Minnesota through the week. This time frame very similar, Tuesday through Thursday before it exits into more of the Great Lakes and the Northeastern United States with lake effect style snow. Now, again, that's two models, different tracks. American model has it more to the east into the Great Lakes. The European model says, look out Northern Plains. Now, let's take a look at a third model just for giggles because the Canadian model is one that can sometimes help us say, well, we got two out of three models saying this or that. Whoop. The Canadian model says the same thing between Wednesday and Saturday morning. A couple of rounds of snow for the Rocky Mountain West, the Pacific Northwest, Northern California as well. Now, a little weather wiggle works its way through parts of eastern Montana as we head from Saturday and into Sunday. That confirms with all three models. Now, as we take a look at what happens here with the next wave going into Tuesday, here it is. Mountain snow in Colorado, heading out into parts of Kansas and Oklahoma, and then driving north as we head into Wednesday. Notice that there's a northern branch. So this particular model has two branches where this low uh, somewhat splits apart into a couple of different waves and then moves north into the western Great Lakes region. 
So of the three models, we have the American, which is where we started, the European, and this Canadian model. All three show a significant storm in the plains. Here's what we can draw from this, and here's what you can do. When we're looking at models as meteorologists, uh, we know that some models have biases towards cold air coming in from Canada. Maybe they're too strong or not strong enough. Other models tend to overblow the amount of snow, and many of these models, almost all of them, will do that. The reason is, is these are a larger grid forecast model. It's not looking at fine detail, number one, like a thunderstorm that might be embedded in all this. It throws that kind of nonsense out. But what it does tend to do, since the grid is farther spaced, it's not forecasting for any specific one point on that grid. And if it does, it tends to overestimate what we get for snowfall amounts. I'll use this model as an example. When I move my cursor around the Pacific Northwest, this model says 64 inches of snow from the Canadian model in uh, parts of British Columbia from the weather making system. And the snow system moving into the Northern Plains and the Great Lakes region, it's saying about eight inches of snow. I suggest that you use this only as guidance, but these amounts oftentimes, many times, are too widespread, showing too big of an area impacted, and they are also often overestimates of what could be. I prefer to call this snowfall potential. There's a lot of things that really will vary that will impact the amount of snow one place gets over the other. I am going to go back to the European model, and what other uh, technique that you can use as someone studying models and trying to decide which one might work the best for you is take a look at this model run showing the European model saying, whoa, look out parts of the Dakotas, look out Minnesota, look out Nebraska, and even parts of uh, Western Iowa as well. Okay. Is this model accurate? Is this right? What did this model think the last run? Okay, this one has model snowfall potential, I like to use that word, 24 inches southwest parts of Minnesota. And by the way, this model and all models are showing a significant amount, a significant amount of wind with this storm. One way we can analyze winds is isobars. So we take a look at the isobars on this map and look at how redonky donk these isobars are as this storm works its way through the Dakotas. They're very close together. The closer together they are, the more like a bullseye this thing looks, with the more rings around it, the stronger it is. The deeper the low pressure, the stronger the low pressure and the stronger the winds. So this storm system will come not only with the potential for rain and mixed precipitation as it gets going, but once it gets cold enough for snow, it could be the blowy variety of snowy. Snowy that's blowy can sometimes, we don't throw this term out lightly, uh, become blizzards in certain areas. Blizzards, meteorologically, have a specific definition. We're talking three hours of heavy snow with winds of 35 miles per hour or greater. And if it lasts that long, we can categorize it as a blizzard. Heavy snow, near zero visibility, 35 mile per hour winds with the storm system. So that is why we don't throw these type of terms out there lightly because there is no model that's going to really pinpoint the location of the strongest winds concurrently with the heaviest bands of snow until we get much closer to the weather making system. That said, this model here, how did it change from this run that you're looking at right now that we are looking at together to the previous model run? And we'll go to the one last night, okay? Here is a look at last night's model run, and this was on Tuesday evening, this one ran, and it showed here is the system right here, moving out of the Southern Rockies into the Central Plains as rain, rain, rain. Oop, it becomes snow in Western North Dakota, and a little bit of light snow with heavy wind working its way through Minnesota and Southern Iowa. Was it there? Yes, it was. Did it impact similar areas? Yes, it did. Did the shift happen in its track and timing? Well, with regards to the timing, it's still a Tuesday night, Wednesday morning storm. So no, the timing didn't shift. Two runs in a row by the European model showing a significant storm system impacting the central and northern plains with the combination of wind and snow. Could it impact travel? Absolutely. Air travel, ground travel all of the above. That's a possibility. So it's something we need to keep an eye on. It's not something that we need to panic about. But for some of you, you may want to gas up and test fire that snowblower because it could be a lot more wintry as we head into the next week.
If you enjoyed what we discussed here, how I discussed it, or you have a comment, leave it below. I'll get back to you. If you like the video, I really do appreciate you hitting the like button right here on YouTube. And of course, if you want to see more videos like this, you can hit the subscribe button by pounding that right now. That all helps me get the word out and share with you what we're seeing for the Central Northern Plains. Again, my name is meteorologist Hutch Johnson. I have the better part of 30 years of on-air broadcast experience. I am now streaming full-time from my offices and studios, sharing my love of weather, passion of weather, and a little bit of grain of salt for you to absorb with a a meteorologist perspective on how we forecast and why we say what we do. So this is what I believe is going to happen. I think we're going to have a storm system next week, move out of the central or southern Rockies. The track is still uncertain. It's looking more likely that it will be a more impactful system at this time. That impact has shifted from the central plains and into the Great Lakes, but now includes more of the northern plains. So I'll keep you updated right here. Thank you so very much for watching. Again, drop a comment. Where are you watching from? Uh, what's your favorite type of uh, weather? And uh, let me know uh, if there's something that you'd like to see me address. Meteorologist Hutch Johnson. Until next time, you can always head over to my website, hutchesweather.com. Check it out. You can upload photos that you take of weather in your area. I would love to see them. And of course, you can get the very latest on your weather with the interactive radar on hutchesweather.com. Have a wonderful, wonderful Wednesday and stay tuned as wintry weather may blast the central and northern plains. But how bad will that blasting be? <laughs> that remains to be seen.